All right, everybody, this week's little project is this Dell laptop right here. As the more experienced of you guys will see, this one doesn't have a screen. Uh, it apparently has a motherboard fault. So I do have a power adapter with it, as you can see, I have it plugged in here. Uh, I have my HDMI monitor plugged in and we're gonna try power on and see what happens. So pressing the power button, uh, there's no light in the power button, but I do see a light down here and I hear the fan spinning. Oh, and then it stops. So let's try that again. So you can see the light coming on there. You hear the fan spinning and the light goes off. Okay, so that's what's happening with this and there's no display, of course. So let's take out the motherboard, take a few pictures and we'll start troubleshooting. And this is what the motherboard looks like when I scanned it in. Now, I did a quick look around the board to see if there was anything blown and I couldn't see anything. The only thing that I saw that was a little unusual was these two inductors right here. And I don't know if this is just a visual thing, but can you see anything with those there? Well, it looks to me like there's a crack along the line here and there's a crack along this one along here. Now, I haven't seen that on one of these boards before. I don't know, is it excess heat can crack them? Um, I've checked them and they test good with the multimeter, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but that's the only visual thing I saw. But listen, what we're going to do is the same thing that I normally do on all of these videos. We'll start at the DC input jack and we'll try and work our way in from there and see if we can find out what's wrong with this. And this is our DC in jack. So we've got six pins, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's mark those out. Now, I can probably get a schematic for this, but what I'm gonna do, try and do is work out what these pins are without any help. So immediately we can see that these two pins right here seem to be connected to ground. So I'm gonna assume these to be ground. We've got two pins in the middle. Three looks like it's not connected. Four is on its own and is coming out to here. So I'm going to presume that's the ID pin that comes on most of these Dell laptops. And then pins 1 and 2. This looks like this is where our DC input comes in. When I actually plug in the cable into this, you can see the colours of the wires, which gives it away as well. But this is our positive input voltage, where it comes in right here. So where does it go from there? Well, by the looks of it, it goes to these three vias what I think are vias right here and across to the other side of the board so let's just chase this through to the other side of the board and see where it goes from there so following through from the front side of the board this is where our voltage comes through so first of all we have EL4201 and EL4202 these are inductors uh, they're not actually on this board as you can see but there are pads put there in case you want to put them onto the board but we're coming straight up here and we have a diode for protection and then our input voltage comes straight onto the source pins of this MOSFET here so let's mark that out so what happens with this MOSFET well this MOSFET is a p-channel MOSFET so as you can see here single p-channel trench MOSFET minus 30 volts 20 amp so the configuration is all drain pins are on one side three source pins and a gate if this gate pin is low then a MOSFET will be switched on and it will allow our input voltage to travel from source to drain so let me mark out the pins on that MOSFET so we all see where it is our input voltage comes onto the source pins if our gate pin is low it permits our input voltage onto the drain so once it's onto the drain pins it then connects to the drain pins of a second MOSFET which is just the same MOSFET turned around either way and similarly if our gate pin is low on a second MOSFET gate pin is this one here that would permit our 19.5 volt input voltage through from our drain onto our source pins and if that's working it then comes through our current sense resistor here and that then becomes our main power rail for the entire laptop so that goes off then to our secondary circuits so what I'm gonna do I actually have an adapter this week would you believe so I'm gonna plug in my adapter I'm gonna check for the input voltage and see how far into this laptop our 19.5 volts is getting. The fact that we've seen we get an LED on the front of it, I'm thinking that our main power rail is probably good and there is probably an issue with one of the other secondary circuits. But let's take some measurements and we'll see. In my first video, 
when this motherboard was in the laptop it was difficult to see what happened when I powered the laptop on so I'm just going to power it on here again on the table just to show you what happens so I've got my proper Dell power adapter plugged in and here is my little power button so I press the power button the light the LED comes on and then fades out so that's what happens in volts DC I've placed my black probe onto ground down here and I'm going to take some measurements with my red probe so first of all we want to follow our voltage in and onto the source pins of the first MOSFET so this is probably the best place to start our measuring so I place my probe to the source pin here and I find that there is 19.5 volts on the source pins of our first MOSFET so we have 19.5 volts at the source pins of our first MOSFET so that means our power adapter is good our DC in jack is good and our voltage is right uh, is correct up to this point so where are we going from here well the gate pin on this should be low given that it's a p-channel MOSFET in order for it to be turned on so I take a measurement of my gate pin here and I find that it measures 3.2 volts so that's low the MOSFET should be turned on and we should be measuring 19.5 volts at the drain pin of this MOSFET and just to confirm that our MOSFET PU4201 is switched on I take a measurement at the drain pin and I find that there is 19.5 volts here so what does that mean well PU4201 is switched on our 19.5 volts is coming through to this point and is then coming on to the drain pins of PU4402 next we want to measure and see what voltage is on the gate pin of PU4402 so I place my red probe to the gate pin and we find that it measures 1.8 volts so that's low so it should mean that our p-channel MOSFET is switching on and we should have our 19.5 volts coming through from our drain to our source and just to confirm that the MOSFET is switched on I'm going to check for voltage at our current sense resistor right here and we find that there's 19.5 volts at this point so it looks like our input section is good and our main 19.5 volt power rail is present so at this point we've confirmed that our 19.5 volt main power rail is present and even when I press the power on it shuts off the 19.5 volts is present the whole time either way so it's not like those two MOSFETs at the input are shutting down when the laptop shuts down the 19.5 volts is always there so the next check I want to do is to look around the laptop and see if I can find my 3.3 volts always on voltage but the first check I'm going to do is just to check that our BIOS battery is okay so I introduce my multimeter in volts DC I place my black probe to ground and I place my red probe to my bias battery so the positive side is the upside here so when I place it here I find that it measures 3.2 volts so the bias battery is good now a lot of the time with these laptops if you see two inductors that are right beside each other where there's it looks like there's a bit of symmetry these are usually the 3.3 volts and 5 volts so I'm going to check this one first so I place my place my red probe to this inductor and we measure 3.38 volts next we're going to measure the voltage at the inductor beside it right here so once again in volts DC in the 20 volt range I place my probe to this inductor and we find that it measures 5.1 volts so we have our 3.3 volts and we have our 5.1 volts so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check at my bias IC and at my super IO and just make sure they're getting the appropriate voltages also I've located our bias IC so that's this one right here um, it wasn't a wind bond or anything it's one of these MXIC I google it to make sure that it is the bias IC and I've just confirmed it these normally come in this 8 pin sort of package you can tell that pin 1 is here with the little mark on it so most of these have our ground on 1, 2, 3, 4 is normally ground and then 5, 6, 7, 8 is where we should normally have our input voltage so I'm going to take a measurement here and make sure this has the correct voltage so in volts DC measuring once again I place my black probe to ground and place my red probe to pin 8 of this bias IC and when I measure this I measure 1.8 volts so our bias IC is also getting the correct voltage 
This is our Super I.O. chip on this motherboard. This is a Nuvaton NPCE985 PB1DX. We've seen this on a couple of other laptops. So I want to see if this is getting the correct input voltage. The fact that we've seen it responds to the power button is usually a good indication that it's working, but I'm just going to double check that it's getting the correct input voltage, which should be 3.3 volts. Now, as you can see, it's very tricky to measure at these pins here. What I've seen some people do is basically just find a capacitor like this or this and just simply measure at it. But I want to make sure it's a VCC capacitor. So I've got a partial schematic, uh, which we can view right here. So on this schematic, you can see we've got KBC, VCC coming in here. And that goes to a number of pins on this Super I.O. So we've got 19, 46, 76, 115. So what I want to see is, is there a capacitor of one of those where I can measure? Because I just don't like going in at the individual pins and touching off them like that. It's just too high risk. It's too much of a chance of crossing two of the pins and injecting 3.3 volts into a pin that shouldn't have any voltage at all. So let's mark out the pin numbers. We have this circle right down here that indicates pin number one which is down in the corner here these can be confusing because you've got two circles on them what I find is helpful is the fact that if you count up one two three four and five they're in blocks from pin one whereas if you come around to this side this is starting at 33 here so it's 33 34 35 and then 40 45 so in that way we know that this is one two three four five but let me count it round and see if we can find one of those pins where the VCC voltage is coming in on. Now what I found is that one is here, 32 is on the top corner, right up here. Uh, 64 is obviously the next corner, I sound like a bingo caller here don't I? 64 is the one on this corner right here and then if you count them up, the one is connected to this capacitor right here is actually 76 and if we look at our schematic once again Pin 76 is one of the pins where we've got VCC. So what I should be measuring is, on pin 76, at that capacitor, I should be measuring 3.3 volts. So let's check that. So with my multimeter once again in volts DC, I place my black probe to a ground, which I'm getting down here, and I place my red probe to the capacitor that connects to pin 76 very carefully and when I measure there I measure 3.2 volts so our super IO is getting the correct voltage and to confirm that the power button is working okay we check out our schematic once again and what we can see is that for this super IO chip pin 91 is PM underscore power button so we need to check pin 91 Pin 91 is right here. So with my multimeter in volts DC once again, I place my red probe very carefully to pin 91. And what I measure there is 1.8 volts. Okay. Now, what I found was when I press the power button, that goes to zero volts. And then when I release the button again, it goes back to 1.8 volts. So it does appear that we are getting the correct signal from the power button. Going back to our schematic again for a second, I can see on pin 15 we have the RSM reset signal. So I'm just going to check for that. So let's go back to our IC and I've located pin 15 and what I measured was 3.2 volts at pin 15 at the RSM reset. Now this was 3.2 volts before I hit the power button and it was also 3.2 volts after I pressed the power button. Now as you saw with the video earlier on, when we power this laptop on with the power button it does actually come on for a few seconds. So I thought it might be useful just to check all the voltage rails um, when this is actually powered on. So I thought the easiest place to measure is at the inductors, of course. So starting from where we finished off with our measurements, we measured 3.3 volts on this inductor here. We measured 5.1 volts on this inductor here. So I continued measuring around the rest of the inductors. So I measured 1.35 volts right here. This is right beside the RAM, obviously, because 1.35 volts is what we need for our DDR3. In case there's any confusion, when I try and power it on, I obviously put in the RAM, but when I'm scanning it, I don't have the RAM in. The Inductor right here measured one volt, and as I move up the board, 
We find the two inductors here beside our main CPU were measuring 0 0.87 volts and 0 0.77 volts when it was powered on. This is 2.7 volts which is on the rail for the battery but I have no battery connected. There are also two inductors on the other side of the board which I just took a subsection of here and these measured 1.2 volts and 1.8 volts. These were the two that I marked out as being cracked but they do seem to have the correct voltages on them. Come back to the two voltages at the CPU for a second. So as I said we're measuring 0 0.77 volts at PL4801. When I look at the schematic for PL4801 which is this right here you can see that this is GFX core. So this is for the graphics now it doesn't tell me exactly what that's meant to be but I think it's in and around where it should be. The other inductor is measuring 0 0.87 volts and that's on PL4701. When I check that on the schematic PL4701 that's meant to be 1 volt. So I think it's close enough that it's acceptable. It's coming in at like 0 0.87 volts. With the power switched off, I decided to take a couple of resistance measurements here at these two inductors. And what I found was that the GFX rail is measuring 86 ohms and the CPU is measuring 284 ohms. I don't have a working one of these boards that I can compare it to, but I just compared the figures to another uh, laptop of, of similar vintage that used DTR, DDR3L memory. And it seemed like those uh, values are okay. They're certainly not shorted anyway, so there's no short through the graphics and there's no short through the CPU either. The last thing I did with this laptop was to desolder the BIOS chip and reprogram it with my AS programmer software. I did that um, and was able to get a backup BIOS from badcaps.net, but unfortunately that made no difference either. And that's as far as I can take it, I think. Um, unfortunately, it's still doing the same thing as it was doing at the start of the video. I press the power button, and the light comes on, and then goes off again. So I've really made no progress with this. Um, we've established, you know, that the voltage rails appear to be coming online. Uh, there's no short across the CPU. Reprogram the bias, replace the battery, try different memory, but still nothing is happening with it. I think it must be a dead CPU. Um, unfortunately, all of the boards from this source seem to have serious issues with the CPU or just essentially issues that are not fixable. I have about four more from this source, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm now concerned that I'm going to waste a lot of time on those with no chance of a fix either. But look, at least it's a bit of content for the channel. I'm calling down to somebody next week to get some more motherboards, and this is a good source. So hopefully we'll get some fixes in the near future. But I'm going to post this. Maybe it's going to be some use to somebody who has the same laptop with an easier fault. And they can just run through all the things I've tried. And hopefully it'll be of use to somebody. I'll be back next week with another fix. Uh, please like and subscribe.